So what's up YouTube? I'm Hunter and I actually do a lot of photography and I've been doing a few photography videos lately. But now I would like to talk to you a little bit about what I actually do here full time as a student. I study print engineering. I wanna try and just give you a, a, a good summary of the last three semesters and what print is. Maybe if, if, if you're somebody who wants to study at the high M and wants to study print, uh, this will give you a better idea of what exactly you're gonna do because chances are it's different from what you expect. So I'll just start chronologically and I'll try to do this in 15 minutes. Uh, it's kind of hard though. So in the first semester, we had Werkstoffkunde, which is material science. Material science in the, the context of printing, you have to deal with paper is a, a fibrous material is a big, is a big topic. You, you gotta talk about what trees are made of, all the way to the behavior of the material when fluid reaches the surface. In material science, you have to deal with artificial materials, which are plastics mainly. Uh, and this has a lot of chemistry in it. And you'll find out why oil is a very important uh, ingredient in the production of plastics. You have to deal with metals. The composition of metals is important. You have to deal with adhesives, art artificial materials, metals and adhesives, uh, they are, uh, they were all covered less, but they were still pretty complicated. In total, I guess it was like 150 pages in the, in the script that we had uh, summarized. Another really important one, uh, probably as important as paper, uh, was printing inks. Um, and inks are a pretty complicated mixture of materials that are customized for the drying time and the, the drying mechanisms, the, the colors themselves, goodness, really uh, a lot of stuff. And uh, you'll go through like UV light. Uh, and this is also, this goes into print production a little bit, which is the second part. Um, you go into like UV light, thermal drying. You can actually have an electron drying where you actually hit the material with electrons. Pretty bad for the environment, but apparently really effective. So that, that's material science. Um, Werkstoffkunde, that's what you're going to see in Werkstoffkunde. You, you'll also have in the first semester print production one, which is the first level of print production. And this is an introduction to the actual methods of printing. So you have Gebrew printing, where you engrave a steel cylinder or a metal cylinder with an image. Offset, of course, is where you have uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic sections of a metal plate, uh, of a coated metal plate that are exposed to laser light and then it's developed and it's it's washed off then you have inkjet printing which is digital really interesting and it's pretty new and and then you have lastly screen printing and i hope i'm not forgetting one of the one of the printing methods this method was probably the most interesting last week because it's necessary for solar printing it's necessary for electronics it's necessary for materials that don't that aren't flat and one of the things i found most interesting was with with solar panels for example which are screen printed. Uh, some of the questions of modern times right now are how we can increase the fineness of the lines down to, who knows, 10 micrometers, maybe lower, uh, with lower tolerances as well. And just to give you an idea, I mean, a hair can be about 40 micrometers. That's a pretty thick hair. It, a, a hair is like 10 to 40 micrometers. But we're talking about this kind of fineness when we're printing with screen printing, when we're printing electronics. And this was, this was pretty much the first semester. Uh, the second semester was a, a practical lab kind of internship thing with the university. It's called a practicum in German. I don't, I don't know how you translate that in English. I guess you call them your practicals. In that, we were actually given hands-on experience with the different machines that they have at the university. They have a gravure machine, they have an offset machine. They have a pretty basic screen printing setup and digital printing as well. That's the kind of, it's almost like your offset, your, your uh, office printers that use uh, your, your digital printers that you know that are like really large and they can print up to like A4 format paper. Uh, it's kind of similar to that, but it was a little bit bigger and we, we took them apart and uh, saw how they work and, and saw how the, the inks for that kind of printer is actually powder. It's not fluid, which is really cool. That was, that, was, that was the practical and that was followed up by an exam called a print production two, I think. That was basically more in depth about what we learned in print. 
uh, it, during that during the practical and where we could use digital printing, exactly how the other methods work, what their advantages and disadvantages are. With that print production, we had pre-media, which deals with pre-press, the pre-press stage of a printing job, which is you have to deal with a lot of electronic files. You got to deal with file compression. You got to know how PDFs are encoded. You got to know exactly how a PDF works and why we have different PDF types. Uh, what kind of accuracies you're looking for if you're going for print or if you're just publishing on the web. That's, that's pre-press. Uh, it's pretty in-depth, a little bit dry. Combined with pre-press, which made it very difficult. And I actually failed. I failed material science and I had to write the material science exam last semester as well. But we had pre-press and a class called FODMAS Technic together in one exam. And FODMAS Technic literally translated is color measurement technology. I don't really know how you would translate that in English, but that deals with how the eye perceives colors, how colors are measured, how colors are produced, really complicated. It goes from biology to, to physics. It, 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 gets pretty, it gets pretty heavily into physics with wavelengths. That's where we started with colors, but you'll find out that wavelength measurement of a color doesn't correspond or accurately represent the way the eye perceives colors, which is why over the last like 30 years, color color measurement has been customized for this. And, and, and yeah, it's pretty crazy because I have certain sensitivities and the, the color tables that you'll see today in your typical art class have been have been customized for, for this using, using math. Uh, Chinese was also there, uh, but I'm not gonna talk about Chinese that much because it's not the standard course of study and it's pretty small. Wish it was bigger, but it's pretty small. In the third semester right now, we have post press, which is also really in depth. That script, uh, the script to those lectures uh, is about 350 pages compared to material science, which I also thought was hard, which was about 270 pages. And post press deals with everything from uh, glossy coatings or just coatings in general to impressions, uh, pressing the paper uh, or pressing whatever material to get a certain texture or something. Uh, in post press, right now I'm I'm dealing with how to fold paper because if you have if you have a document that has hundreds of pages and you want to print hundreds of copies of these, you're probably going to do an offset, and you're probably going to have lots of plates that you're going to have to manage. And if you have 16 pages on one plate, then you are going to need to know how to fold these things. And it could be that you want to fold them inside of each other, or you just want to stack them on top of each other. Both methods have different advantages and disadvantages. So it gets, yeah, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast in post-press. Other than post-press, we have st media standards themselves, which deals with global standards of media. America has different standards with their colors and their printers than Europe. Europe has different color, uh, different standards for the environmental standards, color standards, printing standards, media standards, uh, financial, financial happenings in both of these countries are also different than Asian standards. Beziehungsweise, Japanese, standards because Japan does a lot of research and development and print. And we have lastly a course called Workflows, which is similar to pre-media, but it deals with having an overview of the entire process of a print, uh, the processing of a printing job. And you'll have to deal with like how the machines are connected, what software connects the machines. Can we produce something automatically or do we need to have people in the process and what at what point does a person come into the process? What is the cost difference between having a person managing a process and a machine? Are the machines connected physically? What, uh, how, how does the customer interface with the company? Does the customer work in the cloud, which is kind of new and very useful and very promising? Or does the customer just call us and have a physical courier? that can deliver the products on a global scale. How do we, how do we manage, how do we manage a, a, a printing a, a company at, a, 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 at this global scale? And that's workflows. And that's, that's pretty much the first three semesters. If you do study the Chinese, uh, the Chinese version of the studies, which I do recommend, don't underestimate how difficult Chinese will be because it's very, we started with 12 people and now we have about four people. After two, after two semesters, this is only in the third semester. Chinese and printing both are very difficult fields. If you do study the Chinese version, you will get very intensive eight hours a week of Chinese language courses, as well as the other print lectures that you have. And there's actually, Chinese in this case does replace physics. 
compared to the standard the standard one. Oh man, I've been recording this video for like an hour and I am really having trouble shortening all of it. And I went over by 30 seconds on that last one. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that I hope this gave you a good idea about print and what it is and what I do now and why print is a fascinating field and necessary field to be studied. Um, I'm, I'm, I look forward to working in the industry and that's the first time I can say that about what I'm studying. And it's not just about print either. Pretty much every subject in my experience becomes complicated like this as soon as you start it. And it's important to know that you really know nothing about anything that will allow you to become enthusiastic about discovering the, the, the newness of whatever you do. And uh, in my case, it's print that excites me a lot. And print is about to give me the opportunity to go to China and study print there and, and work at a Chinese company. And that's probably the, best the next best opportunity in my life after coming to Germany to, to, to study the beginnings. I, I hope I see you in the in the next video.